Our distinguished speaker today is Professor Thomas Metzloff, a member of the Duke Law faculty for over 35 years. Professor Metzloff teaches civil procedure, ethics, and dispute resolution. He also teaches a specialized course for LLM students on the American legal system called Distinctive Aspects of U.S. Law. A graduate of Yale College and Harvard Law School, Professor Metzloff began his professional career with a judicial clerkship on the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans, followed by a clerkship with the Supreme Court of the United States. He then practiced with a private firm in Atlanta doing civil litigation matters before accepting a position at Duke Law School in 1985. Professor Metzloff served as the law school's senior associate dean for academic affairs from 1998 to 2001 and as director of the Voices of American Law Project. We are honored to have this distinguished faculty member and mentor of so many of LLM students over the years address the class of 2021 today. Professor Metzloff. I can actually talk to you without a mask on. Uh, you came. That's an amazing thing in the year that we just came. You came to the United States during a very difficult time. You came when we were conducting the most bizarre election in our history. You came and you witnessed the storming of our US Capitol on January 6th. And you also came to Durham and to Duke Law School. That took, as the dean said, courage and conviction and commitment. A commitment, I know, of financial resources, but more importantly, a commitment to yourself and to your professional development. As you know from our lectures, I see part of my job as teaching the course to also just talk about the United States and our culture and our politics. And I thought, as I was thinking about what is this momentous occasion today that we're celebrating, the year that you spent here, I would do what I do and find some American reference points. And the first that I came up with is from Woody Allen in a movie called Annie Hall where he said, 80% of life is showing up. And I used to think that's kind of a silly phrase. Yeah, I mean, there is something about showing up. But in light of what we've been through the last year, I think he probably has the percentage too low. It might be 90%. Maybe we're up to 95% of life is showing up, because it's hard to show up. And what we've done, and what you did to come to Duke, to come to Duke Law School, to spend this year with us, is 95%. It's an amazing effort. Second sort of thing that comes to mind as an American reference is the great who stole Christmas. Now, I'm a little tentative about talking about religious, but I think there is, under the lemon test, I have a secular purpose. <laughs> I'm not trying to inhibit or, you know, religion or take an effect. There's no excessive entanglement. You're all old enough that there is no coercive impact on you, I think. You can tell what I've been doing for this last week, which is uh, grading your exams. Um, but The Greatest Old Christmas is a curmudgeonly old fellow who doesn't like the holidays. And he schemes, he sees this community, Whoville, where he lives nearby, and he sees them getting ready for this great celebration. And he conspires to ruin it. And he sneaks down and steals the presents and steals these sorts of things. And somewhat magically, on the morning of the holiday, it still happens. And he is puzzled. And what does the Grinch say? <clears throat> he says, Christmas came anyway. He hadn't stopped it from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without bags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. Well, the year you spent here, we did without a lot of the traditional packages, boxes, and bags of law school. Your year here came sometimes without faces, without lectures, without lunches. But I hope it came all the same anyway. And I think 
like the Scritch story, what we saw was that the spirit of what we do at Duke wasn't tied up with some of that stuff. And it achieved, I hope, the goal here. It came anyway. Well, what is this year all about? What are we celebrating? What is the process? What is the reality of what happened in this last year? It might take some time to figure that out. But I come to sort of my third American reference, Field of Dreams. And this is where you know me from teaching. I wish I had my PowerPoint and I could show you some pictures. And I'd show you a video clip. Uh, maybe I do that because I think those are sometimes wonderful ways to see what's going on. But if you haven't seen the movie Field of Dreams, it's about baseball. And it's about a farmer in Iowa, Ray Kinsella, played by Kevin Cosner. I think I like this image because as I work through it, uh, I'm kind of the Kevin Cosner role. He's a good-looking guy. That's kind of cool. <laughs> and he has, is having some problems, but he sort of has a voice that speaks to him. If you build it, they will come. Actually, it's he will come, but in American lore now, if you build it, they will come. And he built, what is it, a baseball field in a cornfield. Now, some of you are going to say, wait a minute, I don't understand Duke Law School. doesn't look anything like a baseball field in a, a, baseball in a field in a cornfield. Okay, I grant you that, true. But we are a law school in a forest, and maybe just as sort of different, strange, and unusual from where you came from. And the story is about different people who come to this field, it's kind of magical, some of it's a little bit silly, although the movie has received a great deal of sort of recognition. The National Film Registry does say, has preserved it as a culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant movie, so I'm not too far afield to talk about it. And the people come for different reasons and different things happen to them. And in the end, he is told by one of the characters to finish the field, to build it. And the quote is, um, Ray, the character's name is Ray Kinsella. Ray, they will come. They will come to Iowa, put in Durham there. They will come to Durham for reasons they can't even fathom. People will come. And I think about you, and uh, I know so many of you have different reasons for coming to this LLM program in Durham. Different reasons why you picked Duke as compared to other opportunities and choices that you all had. And maybe you don't even fathom why. But what we do at Duke Law, why the LLM program is so important, I've now finished, this is, you are my 20th class that I've taught. Almost 2,000 <laughs> LLMs. Thank you. The teaching part is fun. The 2,000 exams, I'm not so sure about. But what we do is to, I think at Duke, all of us as a faculty have created at least our legal equivalent of a field of dreams. It is a place where people like you come for reasons they maybe can't fathom, but something happens. You get to play. It's not a baseball game. It may not be as fun as a baseball game, but for the year here, you were part of it. And I know for me, the journey of teaching you as LLMs in the distinctive aspects of American law, I remember it was Kate Bartlett about 20 years ago who came to me and said, Tom, would you like to teach this course? And I said, why me? Uh, I'm the least international person on the faculty. I, my idea of fun is hanging out in courtrooms and watching juries get selected and decide cases. And she said, well, that's the point. It's, you're teaching American law. Oh. Good point, I get that, okay. And as I start to think about, all right, so what, what is it that I can do with this class? It led me to the Voices of American Law Project, the documentaries that are really the heart of what I try to do. And it was so much fun, it was my field of dreams, to go out and talk to these people, these people who made constitutional law, the people whose beliefs in what the rule of law could be and what it should be, what our constitutional values are. And they weren't lawyers. 
So I think the fun part for me was talking to the actual people who felt that what had happened to them was wrong. And as I said from the very beginning of class, in the United States, if we think something's wrong, it must be unconstitutional. <laughs> and to listen to those people articulate what the rule of law is and to share that with you. I think when I first started this class, it was, hey, I'm going to show off our great American system, and you're here to sort of, these people are coming here to sort of embrace it. In the last four or five years, I think that my views on that have changed a little bit. I'm sharing it. I'm sharing it with the perspective that I don't know if what we're doing is really all that good an idea anymore, but we, here's what we're trying to do. We do have a rule of law, a rule of law that's being challenged. And I, this week, this semester especially, it seemed like every week we were talking about things that are changing, things where law seems more like politics. And I offer it up to you now, not as, here's how to do it, follow us, but more like, here's what we're working with. Learn from it. And at the end of the process, I don't know what we'll have. We'll have something. But I hope that this year that you spent here had some aspects of playing on a field of dreams. It is for us. It is so, I am so grateful that you did come, that you came in this difficult time, that you showed up, that you played. I suppose a speech like this shouldn't end without looking to the future, although my message today is really a celebration of the year, that it ends today. I know graduations are about going forth, but I think today and what you accomplished is more about what you did, the year you spent. You did come, and I am so thankful for you that you did. But I will finish with just a brief word about where you're going to go, because it's amazing to me. I know the paths that some of your predecessor LLMs have taken. It's amazing. It's a different path than so many of our JD students. There are over 3,000, close to 3,000 Duke LLMs. I realize you have other communities and allegiances that you form from your own schools in your own countries. And I hope that the Duke Law piece becomes an important part of it. It is to us. I look forward to seeing you back. I look forward to hearing about what you're doing and the great things that you'll do. So I will close with another Dr. Seuss book the places you'll go, and it, this is just the beginning. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know. And you are the guys and gals who'll decide where you'll go. So Godspeed, and thank you so much for being here this last year. Thank you.